Hi guys, this is Marvin from shopsadapage.com and today we're going to do an unboxing review of the new cheapest mechanical keyboard out there, the Shipado JK200 mechanical keyboard. You've been asking for this and now it's here. After this review, I'm going to give this away to one of you guys, so make sure to stick around. With that said, let's get into it. Right here, we have the box for the Shipado JK200 mechanical keyboard. It has a Blackwing logo right here, and then at the back, it looks like it is available in two colors, black and white. It has double shot keycaps, metal back plating, mechanical blue switches, and an onboard chip. For the most part, the packaging of this keyboard is pretty decent considering it's only around 700 pesos, significantly cheaper than the Gigaware K28, which is around 1000 pesos. So inside the box, we have the keyboard itself protected by this foam sleeve. Pretty standard for budget keyboards like this. Aside from the keyboard, there's nothing else inside the box so looks like we're gonna have to figure this keyboard out ourselves. At first look, the Shipado JK200 looks pretty stealthy in terms of its design, colors, and texture. You really can't even see the fonts on this keyboard which is quite unusual. But to be honest, it kinda looks cool. It also has a rough texture on its metal back plating that completes the overall stealthy look. Up here, we have the LED indicators for num lock, scroll, and caps lock. In terms of build quality, surprisingly, it doesn't flex that much thanks to its rigid metal back plating and it also has a decent weight to it of around 860 grams. But you also can't deny the fact that the overall look and feel is nowhere near premium, with some imperfections here and there. But considering its price, you really can't ask for more than this. The layout is pretty standard with 104 keys, which means you have the numpad section here on the right side. Now, looking closer on its side, we can see the thin metal back plating here, and the bottom plastic housing here which is also relatively thin compared to most keyboards that I've tried. The keycaps use the OEM standard profile for ergonomics and have a floating keys design, which means you can see the actual key switches. On the back side, you will see the non-detachable cable, which is also not braided by the way for obvious reasons. And then at the back, we have two rubber feet here and two adjustable stands here that unfortunately doesn't have rubber feet. And then we have the usual technical information at the center here. Going back in front, like I said, the overall look is pretty stealthy and you just have to align your expectations right in terms of the design and build quality. With regards to the switches, at first touch, it does feel like a true mechanical keyboard. We'll dig in on that further later and we're going to take a closer look at these switches. One thing worth noting though in terms of the design is that the Shipado logo right here is not that visible compared to the one we saw on the box as you can see here. Moving on, let's discuss the RGB lighting which I think is where most of the cost cutting was made in order for this to be super affordable. Powering up this keyboard as you can see the RGB lighting is pretty weak and it only has a couple of lighting modes which are static and breathing. You can turn the lighting on and off by pressing FN plus scroll lock key and you can change to breathing mode by pressing Fn plus pause break. Aside from that, you can change the brightness by pressing Fn plus up and down arrow keys and that's pretty much it. Now just to give you an idea, here's the RGB lighting of the Royal Clutch G87 which by the way is also not that bright because the LEDs on this keyboard is at the bottom of the switch. So you can really tell how bad the lighting on the Shipado JK200 is. Alright guys, let's take a closer look at the switches on this keyboard. The Shipado JK200 uses a mechanical blue switch that is clicky and tactile. It has the same stabilizer as what the Gigaware K28's Content Blue switch has. It is also a tad heavier but less clicky than the Content Blue switch and most blue switch that I've tried like the Otemu and even the Razer Green switches. Looking closer, it has an X branding on it which I cannot find which manufacturer made this. But it's safe to say that it's one of those knockoff blue switches from the original Cherry MX ones. As per my research, it requires 60 plus or minus 10 grams to actuate. And as per my actual testing, it's right around just that at 60 to 70 grams. As you can see on the close-up look here, this is definitely a mechanical switch, which is the most asked question about this keyboard, if this keyboard is really a legit mechanical one. So there is your answer guys. Now when it comes to the keycaps, this keyboard uses double shot ABS keycaps with laser etched fonts which means it's not going to fade. It also has a rough texture that complements the overall look of the keyboard. The fonts used are the typical typeface that is used on this kind of budget keyboards. 
The only downside of these keycaps is that the color of the inner molding for the translucent font is not as white as it should be, so it's not that readable without illumination. Here's a typing test so that you can have an idea how the X Blue Switch sounds. As you've heard, being a blue switch is definitely clicky and loud, but like I said, it's not as loud as my other clicky and tactile keyboards. Here are some comparisons for good measure. The Shipado JK200 is definitely going to be an upgrade if you're using a membrane keyboard like this. It is way more satisfying than a mushy mechanical feel keyboard. And while we're at it, here's more comparisons for you guys to kinda help you decide if the Shipado JK200 is worth a shot compared to other keyboards in various price points. In the future, once I collect more keyboards, I'll probably make an entire video comparison for you guys. Alright, moving on, let's get back to the RGB lighting and find out the reason why it's so dim. As per close inspection, it seems that the key switches are not individually backlit as you can see here. I guess this is one way of cutting the cost, but I feel like they could have done much better than this, especially that other membrane keyboards do a lot better in terms of lighting. Nevertheless, you get what you pay for. Other things that I found unusual on this keyboard is the stabilizers for the spacebar, shift key, and the like. It uses a spring type of design on the spacebar as you can see here, and then on the shift key, it just has this plastic tube stabilizing the key. Now, let's discuss the performance of this keyboard. When it comes to normal day-to-day -day tasks, I didn't encounter any issues with it. The typing experience is decent, it's clicky, tactile, and responsive, and I didn't encounter any stock keys whatsoever. The overall experience is good considering the price. Like I said, the switch is not that loud and a little bit scratchier than I would like. The feel is definitely on the cheaper side, so again, you have to set your expectations right. Now, it is said on the specifications that it has N key rollover, but as for my testing, I encountered some keys that were not registered properly when being pressed simultaneously as you can see. It is kinda random across different rows of the keyboard. But during my real-world use of this keyboard, I didn't find that an issue even when gaming. Maybe because the games I play don't necessarily require multiple keys to be pressed at the same time. So just bear that in mind if you're planning to get this keyboard. So in conclusion, the Shipado JK200 has a lot of compromises to cut its cost. But it's definitely a mechanical keyboard which is the most important thing here. Some membrane or mechanical feel keyboards are around 400 to 600 pesos range. So you just need to add a couple of hundreds more to get a true mechanical keyboard with this. Now I guess the last question is, which one to get? This or the second GPS mechanical keyboard which is the GigaWare K28? Well, if you're really in a tight budget and you just want to try a mechanical keyboard, then this is a good option. 
But if you can spare a little bit more, I would suggest go for the Gigaware K28 for better RGB lighting and arguably a better switch. Lastly, if you're really serious on getting a proper mechanical keyboard, then go straight ahead for something better like the popular Rack Elise and the Techware Phantom for around 2,000 pesos. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link below. Like I said, I want to give this away to one of you guys, so make sure to check the link below. I know this is not that expensive, but if you haven't tried a mechanical keyboard yet, then you should probably join. Subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Thank you, have a great day.